Hi guys, this is uh, Steve again from Pure Quality Domains. And today I'm going to talk to you about how everybody gets fooled by domain metrics. So you know there's a lot of metrics thrown around out there by Majestic, Ahrefs, OpenSight Explorer. And people really depend on these metrics far too much. And they actually forget about what really makes a good domain at its core. You know, the proper metrics to really analyze domain by. And why is this so important? Well, you know, I've personally wasted thousands of dollars on bad domains going by these sort of metrics. You know, I've, I've been doing this a long time and I used to rely too, far too much on PR and actually ended up with quite a few useless sites on my hands. And, you know, I believe that this is knowledge that everybody should have. You know, like I mentioned, I, I really didn't have much knowledge when I first started, wasted a lot of money lost a lot of motivation, a lot of confidence in what I was doing. And, you know, I really think there's knowledge that can, you know, keep the ball rolling for you, keep, keep you moving forward. And, you know, good domains are so important nowadays. But, you know, most importantly of all, it saves our time, right? And, I mean, SEO, time is really of the essence. Things are changing all the time. And the last thing you want to do is be trawling through auctions every single day. And really to save the most time, what I use is Register Compass. Um, so this is a tool that really provides you with every every single metric uh, that's important out there for a domain, and it really lets you um, sift through them quite easily. So you might be thinking, well, you know, you guys sell domains. Why are you giving us this information? And it's because it's important that you understand what you should be paying for. So you know, when is it okay to actually pay a premium for a domain, and when you shouldn't be paying, and how you should avoid scams where people, you know, try to inflate a metric and basically just steal your money. And also, you know, we realize that, you know, we don't have um, all the domains that everybody might want. You know, there might be specific niches out there that, that we don't satisfy when we release our, our list every week. So, you know, we realize that people are going to be going out there and buying domains from other places as well. And this is information that you should take with you no matter where you go. So today you're going to learn when to actually trust the Moz Domain Authority. You know, this is a very important metric. However, there's certain times when you should trust it, certain times when you shouldn't. Why PR is useless, I don't use this at all anymore. Why you can't trust Majestic Trustflow, so actually Trustflow, um, you know, contrary to the name, it actually can be manipulated quite easily. So I'm going to show you when you can trust it and when you can't why citation flow is useless I really again like PR I never use citation flow and why backlinks are all that matters you know these are really the backlinks are the core of what makes a good domain to buy and these are really what you should be looking at alright so let's over to register compass I'm gonna show you all these metrics and when we should be trusting them and when it's pretty much a scam all right, guys, so here we're inside Register Compass, and you can see why I like using this tool. There's just so many options here that you can use to sift through domains. Now, I'm not going to go through all these options right now. I'm assuming that, uh, you know, you've, you've possibly used Register Compass quite a bit before, um, or, you know, you're familiar with a lot of the terminology here, so I'm not going to go over all of it. Um, however, what I want to do is go through some of the metrics that I mentioned in the presentation before. So I've actually done a domain search over here and I've ordered the domains by the SEO Moz Domain Authority. So this is what a lot of people order their domains by. Uh, you know, I do that too, to basically get it in the order of the best domain to the worst, or so we think. So I've actually just taken a test domain over here. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this, uh, you know, XJ, whatever. And it's got an SEO Moz Domain Authority of 33. All right, so this sounds really good. Now. I've opened it up in Majestic over here. I'm going to show you why in this case we really cannot look at the domain authority as a sign of power of the domain. Now this domain authority of 33 is being built up by all of these backlinks here. Right? So even though there's 250,000 backlinks and they're probably all spammy, um, each of them contributes a little bit to the domain authority, which is why you're getting that domain authority of 33. So basically you really cannot trust a domain that has a high DA but has so many backlinks. Because that's basically just a ton of spammy backlinks that are contributing to it. All right. And you know, like I mentioned, uh, citation flow, right? Citation flow is essentially how many domains 
are, are linking to yours. And you can see we have a really high citation flow here. And why that is was because we have 1,240 different referring domains, right? But again, these are all spam domains and it's contributing to a high citation flow. So really citation flow is, is not an important metric because it doesn't tell you the quality of the domains that are linking to you. It just says how many they are, right? So you really, really cannot focus on the citation flow. And also, like I mentioned, you know, the domain authority, you really need to look into uh, what the quality of the domains is linking in. You know, I'm actually gonna do just, just a quick look here. And so if we scroll down here, you know, you, you know, you can see this really, really low trust flow. You know, all of these domains that are linking to it, they also have high citation flow, meaning that they've all also been spammed as well. So, you know, this is really something that you want to look for here. So, you know, all this low trust flow here, you know, below 10, you know, I would say anything below 20 over here is really, really, you know, it's, it, it can basically just be considered a spam. So that basically covers off the domain authority and the citation flow in terms of what to look out for, right? So again, you just want to make sure that any high domain authority you're seeing is not being built up by these spammy domains like this. Now, something else people tend to focus on um, is the majestic trust flow, right? So what I've done here is I've actually opened up a domain that um, we actually have this one for sale right now, uh, which is why I'm not revealing the actual don domain name. But you can see that the trust flow and the citation flow are not very impressive, uh, you know, or so we think. Again, the citation flow doesn't really matter. So I really want to focus in on the trust flow here, right? So a trust flow of six. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, in Majestic, the way that they've done it is via topic, right? So our trust flow only, only being six actually just means that there's no one topic that's really dominant with this domain, right? You can see it's spread between society law, society politics, news, you know, business and investing. So there's not one clear focus of this domain, right? And that's why this is called the topical trust flow. You need to understand that Majestic analyzes this via dominance of a certain topic. So the only reason why you should be looking for high trust flow is only if you have a very heavily themed site or you need a heavily themed either money site or PBN site, you know, if it's really around, uh, you know, health or, you know, if I really want society and law, that's when you should be looking for high trust flow. However, this domain is actually just spread between many different topics, right? And you're going to see here, I've actually opened up the referring domains of this site. Look at this. I mean, we've got Huffington Post linking to it, DallasNews.com. I mean, really, these are incredible sites. I mean, look look at this. You can see uh, Trust Flow 68, Citation Flow 64. I mean, just going down this list, it has incredible, an incredible backlink profile, right? I mean, there's literally no spam here at all, meaning that the domain authority that this site has is being built up only by quality, only by these sites, right? So if we go back to this breakdown over here, you know, this really shows us why the trust flow, you know, it can be a good, a good indicator of, the, of a quality of a domain, but really you can't just say, or you can't just look at the trust flow of six and right away say, this is a poor domain. You need to look through the referring domains and the backlinks to really make sure what kind of a site it is. Now, the way that trust flow can actually be manipulated is actually similar to what we saw before. So let's say, you know, we've got all these sites here linking through to us. They're all spam domains, right? But, you know, you can see that many of these are on the same topic, right? So we've got regional Europe, uh, regional Europe all throughout here. However, however, they're all spam domains, right? But if you get enough of these linking through to you, basically what happens is you end up building up a trust flow so you can see over here, we've got a trust flow of 12, right? So this 12 is coming from many, many spam backlinks of the same topic, right? They're all linking in um, based around the same, um, the same niche, or they all have the same relevance to them. So you can see here, we've got a trust flow of 12, which is actually double that of our high quality site here with Huffington Post and Dallas News backlinks, right? So that's exactly how trust flow can be manipulated. 
So again, the way that you remedy the situation is to look through the referring domains and the backlinks to see where that trust flow is coming from. Now, I've also done just a little test here to show you why PR is really also quite useless as well. I mean, essentially you can have a high PR domain, which is very high quality, but again, this would be confirmed by looking through the referring domains and the backlinks. Now, I just picked out a site here, uh, bcstewardconsultations.ca. I came across this domain recently, and it was showing a PR6. You know, uh, I'm here on, on rankchecker.com showing that the PR is actually valid, right? And I just want to go into the actual backlinks of the site. So you can see here, BC Steward Consultations. Um, I'll actually go to the summary first. So you can see there's really hardly any backlinks. You've got a zero trust flow over here. And, you know, really what this is telling me is that that PR that the site is showing is probably coming from one or two backlinks which have passed on that PR. And that's really a danger about PRs. I can, it can be passed on quite easily. But that also means that it can be taken away quite easily as well. So if I go to the referring domains over here and check out the backlinks, I am not seeing any site over here where that PR could be coming from. You know, these are not bad sites, but not good sites over here. So what does that tell me? That tells me that the link or the links with the PR have actually been deleted. But the Google toolbar PR is only updated, you know, is it once every six months now? So chances are this site has lost all of its power, but its toolbar PR is actually showing that it's a PR6, right? Now this is very dangerous. If you bought based on that PR6, I mean, this site is, is gonna have absolutely no worth because you know those, those couple select links that were giving it its PR are gone. They've been deleted. You know, they're, they're not showing up here. So again, guys, it just reiterates why the backlinks are all that matters, right? You need to look through, you know, I'm using Majestic as an example here. You need to look through the referring domains. How quality are those domains? You need to check out the backlinks and make sure that, you know, if a site looks like it's quality, it's got high domain authority, it's got, you know, good trust flow, you need to make sure that, um, that this is valid, right? Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, why, why when I'm looking through the backlinks am I mentioning, well, you know, we have to look at, or we should be looking at trust flow and citation flow with these, but, you know, we shouldn't be focusing on it as much with our money sites or our PBN sites that we're buying. Well, you know, you need to realize that the sites linking in to our PBN sites, you know, I mean, these, we want these to be pretty massive sites, you know, like I showed you before, you know, we've got like Huffington Post and Dallas News. You know, I mean, these are huge sites that have built up, you know, authority over a long time. And we can't expect to have sites like that in our PBNs. So when a site is, is aged and trustworthy like that, you know, the, these big authority sites, yes, you know, we can look at the trust flow and the citation flow as very good indications of, um, of their, their quality, right? But when we're talking about our, our PBN sites, you know, it's not as important um, to look at those, you know, we want to look at how many of those trustworthy domains are linking through to us because, you know, our PBN sites are not going to be huge authority sites unless, you know, we happen to get lucky and, you know, pick up a massive authority site at auction, which is, you know, very, very rare. Now, guys, something else that I want to mention is, you know, there's some sites that you'll come across that aren't showing any PR. You know, they could be PR0 or, you know, PRNA, which just means, you know, no PR at all. And they could actually have very, very strong backlink profiles. Now, why is this? Well, let, let's just use an example site here. I came across this site, fredfm.ca. And you can see, you know, this used to be a, a radio site. So, you know, it's got very, very strong backlink profile here. And you can see, you know, very legitimate sites, you know, radio online, live TV radio, Canadian web radio, you know, it's these are all very, very strong backlinks. And you can tell by this that it's a very, very strong site, but it's not showing any PR, right? So there's actually a couple reasons for this. And actually the most likely is that Google has basically de-indexed the site in what I call uh, a good way, 
right? So it's basically when a site hasn't been used for a few months and Google just takes it off their radar temporarily, right? They say, okay, nothing's happening with the site right now. Uh, let's just take it off our radar. And what happens is that the site, um, you know, it, it doesn't show any toolbar PR and it also seems to be de-indexed, right? But it's actually not been penalized or anything of the sort. Google's just taken it off its radar because it hasn't been used in a while, right? So that's what I discovered with this site was that, you know, all quality backlinks, but it wasn't showing up. It wasn't showing any PR. And the reason being is that it just hasn't been used for a while. It's a perfectly, perfectly good site, right? Um, now, again, another reason uh, could be, uh, you know, why it's not showing any PR is that it just hasn't been updated yet, right? Because Google only updates once every six months. You know, some of these high quality backlinks could have come in that period of time. So therefore, it just won't be showing any PR because of that. All right, guys. So today you've learned that DA or domain authority needs to be from quality sites. So domain authority is actually a very good overall metric to look at, assuming that the number is built up by only quality backlinks and not from spam. All right. PR is quite outdated because it doesn't get updated often enough. Also, PR can be passed on by only one or two, uh, you know, powerful links, meaning that it can also be taken away quite easily. We need to be careful with trust flow because it can also be manipulated similarly to domain authority. If we see a low trust flow or we see a, a good spread of trust flow across different topics, this can actually be a really good thing. We need to look through the backlinks to see where that trust flow is coming from. And actually this works quite well for PBN sites because if we have a variety of topics, this means that we can link out to a variety of sites and still pass on really good juice. Citation flow, you know, I, I believe it's pretty much useless. It just shows the amount of domains linking through to you, which you can see through the referring domains anyways. And again, you know, if you have a small to medium amount of domains linking to you, but they're all quite powerful, again, this produces a very powerful site. And in case I haven't said it enough, backlinks tell us everything we need to know about a site. You need to look through the backlinks. Um, as I've said, you know, about 20 times um, in this video, you really need to look through them, do your due diligence, and, you know, don't be lazy by not checking through them. And, you know, something, you know, something that I really go by is that, you know, don't search for a company to tell you if a domain is quality, right? I mean, Ahrefs, Majestic, um, you know, these guys aren't out there to, uh, you know, make absolutely sure that we find the best domains, right? Th these are companies out there, right? They charge for their services. And we can't rely just on one of them to, to tell us if the domain is quality, right? We can use what they're good for. So, you know, Majestic and Ahrefs, uh, you know, they, uh, they present data in, in quite a good way. But we need to look through that data and interpret it with what we know. So we can't just use these as absolutes for if a domain is quality, all right? So guys, go forth and check your backlinks, and you know hopefully this has been useful, all right? I'll see you soon.